Google announced the first verifiable quantum advantage on their quantum computer chip Willow. And this breakthrough will change everything. Quantum computing isn't just about faster computers, but this is about pushing the limit of physics as we have understood them for the past 200 years. Let me explain what that means, why it matters, and how it will impact the AI space. Google's announcement video got 378,000 views at the time of filming, and the top comment was basically, I understand nothing, but it sounds impressive. And I get it, quantum is not easy. So let's walk through the key moments and translate them. For decades, quantum computers were theoretical. We could build them, but they couldn't really do anything useful with them yet. They were mostly running science experiments, not tools. So Google is saying that that changed. If you ever watched Big Bang Theory, the main character, Leonard, he kind of makes fun of this all the time that they don't actually discover anything or do anything in quantum physics. But let's find out how that changed. Today, I'm here to announce a breakthrough demonstration on Google's quantum chip, Willow, that is leading the way towards near-term real-world applications for quantum computing. So quick context here, Willow isn't brand new. Google introduced it back in December 2024. It's a superconducting quantum processor with 105 qubits. Now, what is qubits? Well, regular computers use what's called bits. A bit is either zero or one, like a light switch on or off. Your laptops and phones run on bits. Quantum computers use qubits. A qubit can be zero or one or a superposition, which is basically zero and one at the same time. I will be low cheap run this algorithm 13,000 times faster than the best classical algorithm running on one of the world's fastest supercomputers. Our experiment is what we call verifiable, which means that its outcome can be repeated and verified, even nature itself. But this is the first time in history. Okay, so Vlad is saying that they ran a specific quantum algorithm on Willow, which was 13,000 times faster than one of the world's best supercomputers, meaning for this complex physics problem, a supercomputer would take years and Willow did it in hours. That alone is pretty huge, but what's more important is that it is verifiable. So in the past, quantum computers sometimes gave results that looked really impressive, but we couldn't always check them. So people could say, cool demo, but how do we know it worked? And they wouldn't be able to prove it. But now we can. Verifiable means that you can repeat this experiment on Willow or any other quantum computers and get the same result every single time. And believe it or not, this is the first time in history a quantum computer has produced verifiable result. Next, he explains what they actually computed. We engineered a quantum echo within a quantum system that revealed information about how that system functions. Okay, so they're using something called quantum echoes. They created a quantum sonar. This is kind of like a bat flying in a cave. It sends out a sound and it bounces back. And from the echo, the bat learns the shape of the cave. So Google's doing the same thing, but inside a quantum world. They run operations forward on their quantum chip, then disturb one qubit then run everything backwards. The forward and backwards signals interfere with each other and create an echo. That echo tells us how the information is spread inside the quantum system. The tiny differences reveal how sensitive the system is. And as the behavior textbooks have predicted for decades, but now we can measure it at scale. Nature runs on quantum rules like molecules, chemical reactions, magnetic systems, and even theories about black holes all follow the quantum interaction patterns. If you can measure these echoes, you can understand how quantum systems behave. Now let's hear from Yu Chen, director of Quantum Processor, explain OTOC. When run on our Willow chip, the quantum echo algorithm gives us a final result known in the quantum world as an out of time order correlator, or OTOC. It's essentially a value that measures sensitive interactions between different parts of a quantum system over time and over space. So OTOC is like a scramble score. It measures how quickly tiny changes spread through a quantum system. You tap one domino in a giant pattern and you watch how fast the effects ripple through. This tells us how sensitive a system is and how fast information spreads and how chaotic or stable it is. Now let's go to the next clip. In addition, we can perform quantum measurement incredibly fast millions of measurement in under one minute over the entire course of the program. We have performed in total one trillion measurement. This is a significant portion of all the measurement that ever been done on all quantum computers, making our experiment one of the most complex experiments in the history of quantum computing. There are two huge ideas here. 
One, Willow is extremely precise. Quantum computers are very fragile. The tiniest noise, vibration, heat, or magnetic interference can ruin the calculation. Willow's hardware can run thousands of quantum operations with extremely low error. Two, they ran over 1 trillion measurements. That's trillion with a T. This single experiment produced more quantum measurements data than almost all of the previous quantum runs in history combined. That's a lot of data. Next, we're going to hear from Nicholas Rubin, chief quantum chemist at Google. So NMR spectroscopy, or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, is a powerful technique that researchers use to learn about molecular shape or structure. The shape of molecules is critical in determining how they work, from biological molecules like proteins to the molecules that store energy in batteries. So if we want to design better drugs, conductors, or materials, we need to accurately understand a molecule shape in a complex environment. Our hope is that we could use the quantum echoes algorithm to augment what's possible with traditional NMR. So NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, is like MRI scan for your body. It uses magnetic fields to figure out what a molecule looks like. This lets scientists design new medicines, better materials, or more efficient batteries. But NMR had its limits in the past. To test this, in partnership with UC Berkeley, we ran the algorithm on our Willow chip to predict the structure of two different molecules. We then verified that our predictions were correct by measuring the same molecules using an NMR spectrometer. So Google used their quantum echo algorithm to predict molecular structure, then verified it with NMR machines. This worked, and this is proof that quantum computers can help us understand molecules in new ways. Today, developing a new drug can take 10 to 15 years because we spend forever trying to predict how molecules behave. Biology runs on quantum physics, and classical computers can only approximate it, which means slow progress and a lot of trial and error. Quantum computers can simulate molecules directly. Instead of guessing how a drug will interact with the body, we can calculate it. What takes years today could eventually take only days. And diseases that feel untreatable right now might become solvable in our lifetime. And there's a bigger idea here, protein folding. The shape of a protein determines what it does. And when that shape goes wrong, we get diseases like Alzheimer or Parkinson's. So AI has made progress in that area, but quantum AI could finish the puzzle. If we can model proteins and repair mechanisms at the quantum level, we're not just treating illnesses, but we're potentially slowing or even reversing aging. AI and quantum are feeding each other now, so we're already using AI to design better quantum hardware where and soon, we'll use quantum computers to supercharge AI. AI is good at learning from mistakes and finding patterns. And quantum computers have massive computational power, but they don't really learn on their own. So when you combine the two together, AI gets the muscle it needs to solve real complex problems, and quantum computers get the ability to improve with each calculation. This might solve one of the biggest problems in AI, common sense. A kid will know what a kitchen looks like, how to run the water, what a cup looks like, what a coffee looks like versus a water. A computer doesn't. And there are too many obvious truths to hard code into AI as of now. And that's why we can't have a physical robot doing household chores for us yet. Though apparently we're working on that, but judging by the preview videos, we're nowhere near it. Now, Google plans to scale from today's 105 qubit chip to millions of qubits. So imagine what they can achieve with that much qubits. But for now, the next milestone is the long-lived logical qubit, where quantum computers can run reliably for longer periods. Once that happens, quantum moves from labs into real industry because they're more useful. Google says that we're about 18 to 36 months away from that. So it took 40 years to get to where we are now, then four years to go from quantum to practical use. And logically, the next leap will be much faster. So the next decade is going to look totally different from the last decade. And the winners in this new world belong to those who think in quantum. AI and quantum computers is probably the most important technological transitions of our lifetime. Now, YouTube algorithm thinks you should watch this video next, so I'll see you there.